So first we've got the two rubberized stickers that go on the back of the pitch black night lights. We can go ahead and do those. So some of you may remember the video I did about the pitch black night lights. The first iteration of these that went out are just smooth plastic on the back. I didn't really think it was that big of a deal, but they did add these rubberized stickers. So I've got two of these to add to the backs of the pitch black night lights. All it is is a rubber sticker. It's been embossed with the uh, Saker logo. So we'll go ahead and clean these off and put the rubberized stickers on there. I have these alcohol pads for backpacking. Um, I'm just gonna use one of these to clean the back here. That way it'll stick better. And then we'll just let that dry and I'll get the other one out. This one is a little bit dusty. Anytime you apply an adhesive, anything to something, you pretty much want to clean the surface with an alcohol pad first, just to make sure the adhesive sticks. All right, so we'll let that dry. That's pretty dry. So, oh, the sticker came off with it. That's not supposed to happen. The adhesive is actually kind of melted and it's stuck to the paper backing. Ooh, yeah, that's not, let's try to get it on there better. Hmm, that side's on, okay, this is just, this side's all messed up. Yeah, that might be a lost cause at this point. So I'll just go ahead and apply it and then I can always lift this side up and put some of my own adhesive on it. Seems to be pretty decent adhesive, but it stuck to the paper. So I'm just gonna use this Gorilla fabric glue because I have it handy and it sticks pretty well. So there's one. Now with this one, I'm gonna be very careful about peeling this off so that it doesn't do the same thing. And it's going to. So yeah, just be really careful when you unpeel this sticker that the glue doesn't come off with the paper. So I think it would be ideal if you had something, I was just using my thumb, but if you had something thinner to stick between the paper and the adhesive just to make sure that the adhesive stays on the rubberized piece and doesn't come off with the paper, that would probably be smart because if you just sort of start peeling that backing off without paying attention, the adhesive is gonna come with it. It's gonna go off, peel off with the paper. So just be really careful about that. Otherwise, these go on pretty easily. They're not as big as the entire piece of the, of the light, the bottom of the light, so it's, it doesn't have to be lined up perfectly because there's some space around the edge. So, um, but yeah, obviously be careful when you peel that paper off the back. Otherwise, that was a pretty simple process. I don't know. I mean, it seems like this should have been more texturized to really be effective, but the logo is on there, so that adds a little bit of texture, I guess. Anyway, we got those on there. So we've got to put these little buckles on the front straps, and then these are the four male buckles that go on. We'll start with the big buckles. Okay, so these are the male buckles that we're gonna swap out. We'll do this one first, I guess. This is gonna impact the fit, so we'll have to refit these when we're done.
Well, maybe we won't have to refit it either if we can put these in roughly the same place, which we should be able to do if we measure it. Um, so it looks like that buckle sits at about nine and a half. So we'll try to put the new one on in the same place. So we're gonna go down through that one and then back up. And I think it needs to be about right there. At least it seems like that's where the indentation is. What I say, nine and a half. So it needs to come a little bit farther down. And that looks about right. So then we're gonna take it back up through this side and then down through this side. And then I've been tucking mine through there. All right, so there's one buckle replaced. Now I'll do this one, and I'm just gonna measure again to make sure I put it in roughly the same place just to avoid having to fit, refit this. This one looks like about 10 inches. Oh, I forgot to measure this one. This side and then this side. All four buckles are replaced. They look good. That'll do. These are replacement buckles for the front straps. So I just need to put these on and then we'll be all finished with replacement parts on these Saker harnesses. So I have two packets, one for Hazel's harness and one for Jaffe's harness. We'll do Hazel's first. So this whole strap just comes out like that. And then I'm gonna pull this Velcro sleeve off of it. So you can see the difference. This one down here is the old one and it's curved. And this is the new one and it's completely flat. We'll put the old one up there. So you just wanna make sure that this strap doesn't get twisted before you put this on. And I'm trying to put it back where it was so that I don't have to refit this. And I think actually the Velcro sleeve should go over these flat buckles better than they went over the curved buckles, the old ones. 
still gonna have to stretch them over it, but it's it's a lot easier because the original were curved and it, they were a little bit larger too. There we go. Oh yeah. And so we'll just put all of this back. Back through this strap. And then it's gonna have to go under the Velcro sleeve. And then we can just kind of move the Velcro sleeve to the side to put this back through the buckle. Just like that. And then through the Velcro sleeve one more time. Just like that. And I probably will have to make some minor adjustments to this because this seems like I might have gotten it a bit too tight compared to how it was, but we'll see. So there's one side. And we'll just do the same, same thing with this one. Velcro sleeve off. And then just take this off. So that's the old one. This is the new one. And I'm just going to go ahead and move it down to where I see this crease where the old one was. Again, just trying to avoid having to make a lot of adjustments to the fitting because I already had it fitted with the old hardware and I kind of want to try to limit how many adjustments I have to make with the new so just like that and then we're gonna thread it up through this through this and then back through gonna go under the Velcro sleeve and then we're gonna go back up through the buckle back down through the buckle and then through this last elastic piece of the Velcro sleeve we're gonna tuck this in under there and might need to loosen that a bit so now the male buckles are replaced and the side neck buckles are also replaced on Hazel's. Now we'll do Jaffe's. And there we go. That's it for replacing the front neck strap buckles and the male Cobra style buckles. This is for the medium large size harness. Saker K9 has a Vimeo channel and a lot of their videos are posted there. So you can definitely find those and I'll link to the replacement buckle video in the description of this video. But I wanted to put something out on YouTube that was easy for people to find here. So hopefully this helps all of you who are needing to replace the medium large size neck buckles and Cobra style buckles. Now that we have these replaced, we'll be using these um, more often and I'll try to do an updated review video. I purchased these harnesses as the pack system uh, for backpacking. I'm a long distance backpacker. I backpack with my dogs. So that is the reason I purchased these. I don't use harnesses with my two dogs on a daily basis simply because they're large dogs. They're powerful dogs and a harness is not the best way to have full control. So. Um, I don't use harnesses as a daily walker. I am only using these for backpacking. So um, we did get the pack system, the saddlebags that attach on here. I'll link to the video where I did my initial review. We have a backpacking trip, a three day backpacking trip coming up at the end of this month. And the dogs will wear these for the first time on a multi-day backpacking trip, actually carrying weight in the saddlebags. So I'll report back after that and let you know what I think. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Of course, again, you know, I'm not a Saker Canine representative. Or I'm not affiliated with Saker Canine in any way. 
It's just that I jumped on these as a pack backpacking system because it really checked a lot of boxes for me. The way these function just solved a lot of annoyances that I had had. Anyway, I'll do an updated video about the Slurpee Sacks and the packs, whole pack system after we do our uh, shakedown hike at the end of this month. Hope this helps some of you and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.